<laughs> I had to hit the press little rubber button. <laughs> yeah. Hit the button. Hit the button. Yeah. Choke that son of a. <laughs> choke oh. it. Choke it. Pull. Pull. Yeah. Anything to get her started. Whew. That was a rough one. Hey, welcome to Share a Beer Show 417. Uh, wow. Uh, so we are back again and better than ever, I think, uh, on this Tuesday, uh, June 20th. Um, I don't know about in your particular neck of the woods, but it, I think I, I, I don't actually watch the news, but I think, uh, just from people that I talk to across the country, it seems like you're experiencing warm weather everywhere. You know, uh, I know we are for sure. <laughs> We're hitting, uh, I think today is supposed to be one. Yeah, it, it actually, yeah, according to my watch, it says it's 121 here. So, oh my um, God. <laughs> but you know I what, Tom? Uh, my favorite part is I'll, 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 I'll be going to work here in a couple hours and, and they're going to piss and moan about how hot it's been all day. And I tell them, you know, the bright spot to that? I was at home in the AC all day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the price you'll go to work and it'll only be like 105 yeah, yeah. well yeah see that's the thing like it, it actually you know what's funny is uh the guy that drives my truck during uh during the day he was saying uh that the ac wasn't cold enough you know and mm -hmm. and uh so when i we kind of share the truck right so it's it's assigned to me, but then he he'll drive it during the day and then kind of let me know a little bit of how it went, you know. So when I showed up this morning and let him know how it went, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's so, I had to actually turn it down. It was so freaking cold. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joe, what do you do? You bring anything to keep yourself cool, like like a cold towel or something? No, or I, I I have to admit, man. I mean, I, I do drive all night, so and, and it does. You know the sun goes down, so it's not like beating on you type heat. But it and, and it so it cools off. I mean, I, I think uh, I think I saw it. You know the temperature in the in the truck. I think it showed uh, ninety one. So uh, is it, it humidity, got, humidity low? No, the that's the difference though. Is that and the sun goes down, so there's nothing to burn that humidity off. So the humidity will go up. You know, yeah. the temperature goes down down. But then the humidity goes up at night. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, it's it's still not as even close to as bad as those guys have it during the day, man. Yeah, uh, it's the real deal here, man. That heat is the real deal. You know? Yep, yeah, it is. It is. It is brutal, man. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. If I, you step outside, I, I matter of fact, when my company was, I had some company this weekend. And uh, I told them, I'm like, you know, they're looking out my back windows into the backyard. And I go, see how beautiful that looks? It looks so beautiful. <laughs> go out there and open that slider and get you some real <laughs> realization, man. <laughs> go out there and get you some of that. Because that is awful. <laughs> yeah. You literally yeah. live in the desert, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the desert, yeah. Yeah, this is it. Uh, to keep in mind, though, I always have lived in the desert. I mean, Albuquerque's the desert as well. It's just the high mm -hmm. desert, um, which is a different. When you add the desert plus elevation, that's a whole different kind of uh, deal. But yeah, no, this this is the real deal, man. This, this heat is crazy. <laughs> Earth Earth lives in a pretty uh, pretty much the same climate, just in California. Mm -hmm. He lives in the California desert, and it's 121 at his house too. He says in the chat, yeah. so. Um, yeah, the earth is very familiar with, we live in pretty much the same climate. Mm -hmm. um, you got to throw 121 around like it's, like it's pancakes. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the thing of it is, is like, okay, let's, let, let's fast forward about six months, eight months from now. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, you're actually going to tell me, oh yeah, it's, it's minus 10. I mean, yeah, you know, and yeah. I'll just be thinking like. <laughs> When when it's still seventy here, and I'll still I'll be thinking like, that's that I can't even like. As yeah. a matter of fact, you guys were talking just like a month or so ago about snow, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like it's still snowing, it's freaking a hundred. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's uh it's all relative to where you're at. You know, I mean it's uh 
you know, if you're in a cold climate, you're going to wear a jacket. You're just going to adjust, you know, I mean, and it's the same thing here. You're, you're going to sweat, you know, that, you know, actually I threw on the same shirt I had and it, that's a common thing you see here is people with sweat lines. Cause you know, you, so I try to rub the sweat off, but yeah, you're going <laughs> to, it's just the, you know, nature of the beast. You're going to walk. Don't, if you come to Phoenix, especially this time of year, or if you go to uh, the Palm Desert in California, any any sort of desert, southwest desert, carry water. I'm telling you. You don't even want to break down on the side of the road without water. You got to carry water. So just just a little tip. <laughs> hey, head coach, how you doing, man? We got Earth and head coach in there. And, uh, so, Bum, what you drinking, my friend? I just opened up. From the new Sierra Nevada beer camp across the world pack, oh, uh, I didn't. I didn't buy the pack. There was. I haven't seen it yet. But just from what I read, there was a lot of them in there that the styles didn't appeal to me. I found a place with single bottles, and I picked out the one that was uh, most up my alley. It's the Camp Out Porter. Oh, okay, okay. All these are collaboration with uh, breweries uh, around the world. And this is quite an expensive twelve pack. Oh, is it um, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I saw it in the store, and it was like twenty-five bucks here for a twelve oh, pack. It, did you call yeah. that beer camp porter or something? Beer camp across the world. Across the world. It's, it's called uh, camp camp out porter. Okay, camp out porter. Right. Having this in my fairly new Sierra glass, it's pretty neat. Oh, I like that glass. Yeah. It's nice, yeah. It's got, it's got all their year rounders mentioned on it the Otrevez, Pale Ale, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. Oddly enough, though, it doesn't have their, their porter and stout mentioned <laughs> anywhere on here, and those are constants yeah. for them. So yeah. that's a can glass, but not a barrel glass. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, goes in a little at the top but it's not like the uh the other stout glasses that we have it's not doesn't have the indentations like where the barrel staves go yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's like that albuquerque uh brewer ipa fest one right, right. Yeah. yeah um it's not bad it's uh i'm tasting there's supposed to be all kinds of mild things going on here Mm -hmm. Earth, all kinds of tastes, and I'm getting mild versions of everything. It's fairly thin for a porter, and when I cracked it, there was barely, barely any hiss. A um, little undercarbonated, fairly thin. Is it still pretty cold? Or? Uh, yeah, it's been out of the fridge for maybe about 20 minutes. Okay, Okay. so yeah, you're getting... That's good. Yeah. Uh, it's not bad. I could, I could fake my way through the tasting notes. I have a big, long... Uh, <laughs> big long uh rate beer review here that i could uh let me show the, 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 <clears throat> the light roasted chocolate yeah, exactly oh, light yeah. cigar aroma <laughs> let's uh yeah let's talk about this one this is uh we're playing off the camping theme of beer camp with a with a beer we're calling camp out porter that evokes the flavors of marshmallow oh by the way this is i didn't this is beercamp.sierranevada.com. Uh, Sierra That's the website mm -hmm. for, for this, okay? Um, but, but, but the beer features special ingredients such as malt smoked over Hanu what is that? Hanuka wood, a tree native to New Zealand, uh, and Manuka. So you've got – wait, Manuka – oh, Manuka honey as well, okay. Uh, additionally, it contains beechwood honey from California and – what is that? Dude, all these Ta Tahitian. Yeah, Tahitian <laughs> vanilla beans. And uh, to reflect the sweet and roasted notes we're looking for in this uh, collaboration. So, you get, um, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm definitely getting the Manuka wood. There's a better <laughs> okay, look at That's what I thought. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you're getting the Manuka wood, I mean, that's. Yeah. Whoa. So his name's Manuka, huh? <laughs> wood. I'm I'm getting manuka wood on the back end. It just kind of hits you, yeah. It's, uh, 
Oh, yeah, you don't get it on the front end as much, but that back end, wow. Jesus. <laughs> there's, a, there's a real strong presence of wood in this one. <laughs> hey, it only took us, it took us 14 minutes tonight. That's not too bad. That's not too bad, yeah. Oh, right on, that's about it. average, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a – yeah, I like the – I like the label on this one, the Camp Out Porter, and it does say brewed with vanilla and honey. So with that in mind, are you getting any sort of vanilla and honey out of this since it's prominent on there? Thanks to the power of suggestion from you, maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> this one is 7.7% .7 ABV. Uh, let's see, ending gravity. The bitterness units are 32, so... Would you buy it again? Uh, probably not. Not at the price that I paid for this single bottle and not at the price they're charging for the 12-pack. Uh, you've, you've got 7,500 ratings on Untapped and uh, uh, 6,900 in the last 30 days. 3.72 bottle caps. That's a pretty good, good rating. Good score. Yeah. I mean, not excellent, not good. Not great, but but solid, really good rating. Yeah. Um, and and of course, all the same numbers we just covered. But uh, yeah, that's uh. What what did you pay for that? Ah, oh, is the price still on the? I actually paid four dollars and thirty five cents for this single bottle. Ouch! That's at the uh, that's at the overprice place that I paid uh, like uh, three bucks for that can of Narragansett coffee porter, the one that. Um, Ruben oh, turned okay. turn me on to ten bucks a case later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow! It's it's an overpriced singles beer store, and I'm at their mercy because they get stuff in there that I can't find anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least it. I mean, what would the whole twelve pack run you? I think in Pennsylvania, I've seen. Uh, I haven't actually seen it for sale yet, but I. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be over twenty five bucks, twenty six, twenty seven bucks. Yeah. La last year's beer camp oh. across America twelve pack was pushing thirty. Ooh. I saw it at twenty eight bucks. Yeah, I saw it for twenty four here okay. at Total Wine today. So M most regular Sierra twelve packs here will cost you about nineteen or twenty bucks. And uh, yeah, I you guess the, you think think the large company they would want to bring down the prices a little bit so they can mm -hmm. ask more widespread taxes. I, makes no I, sense. I guess you're paying for every one of these is an international collaboration. So yeah, I guess you're paying for the cost of them yeah. to <clears throat> If they're it. actually bringing in it, you know, if they're bringing in a uh, Manuka in his big wood all the way from New Zealand, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he flies first class, baby. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he, <laughs> and then he brings his special honey in as well. I mean, <laughs> yeah. takes a while to produce that much honey. You know, that's a <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, what are you having, my friend? Oh, man. Well, I am, um, having the 2017 version of North Coast Brewing's Old Stock ah. Ale. Oh. Oh. I've never had that. I picked up a four pack of this for, I think it was $11.99. So, okay. yeah, it's 11%. Uh, it's good beer. It's good. Yeah. What style is that? Uh, an old ale. An old ale. So, Brune, old ale. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very familiar with old ale. Oh, you're not really? Yeah, it, well, it's called like an alt ale in uh, Germany. Yeah. So if, if you have, you know, an alt beer. Yeah, there was almost no, no, uh, no foam. A nice hiss, but carbonation looks okay, but not a lot of. Uh, I gotta take a picture of this thing, you know. Um. But um, it's been out of the fridge about. Yeah, 35 minutes or so. So it's still chilled, but <clears throat> oh, I'm getting, there's a lot of, there's a lot of malt, a lot of like caramel, like chocolate, you know, like caramel, cho candy bar caramel in here. Not super sweet, but that kind of flavor. 
Mm. A little bit of, I get, I'm getting some smokiness, some spiciness. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty light though. I mean, it's not quite as, it's not thin, but it would, it's a little lighter than I would think. I mean, you can taste the alcohol a little bit. It's not hot, but it's, I guess, warm as far as the alcohol. It's definitely there, right? Yeah. But Have you had that for, for many other year, Mark? I I had that bottle of 2009. Remember that one about two oh, months yeah, ago? Yeah, the one yeah. that was in that um, special container. Yeah. And that was that was excellent. That was. I, and I, I have had a, it like a 2011, but yeah, it's been a while. I, I have a I have a 13 still in my fridge. I bought a four pack a couple of years ago, and I have a oh. 13 13 left in my fridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean this. I'm giving this like four and a four and a quarter at least. I mean this, this is. This is definitely a a solid brew, right? Yeah. It's, it's uh, been around for a minute, and uh, so this is this is from their website. Uh, like a fine port, old stock ale is intended to be laid down uh, with an original gravity over over one point one and a generous hop uh, hopping rate. Old stock ale is well designed to round out and mellow with age. It's brewed with classic Maris Otter malt and fung uh, fug Fuggles and East Kent Goldings hops, all imported from England. So you've mm -hmm. got a, an old ale. The color is mahogany, which is a great description for the color. Mm -hmm. I, need, I, need to, I need to remember that in my color. Yeah, that is, that is well. a good color. Yeah, it is, it is definitely. It's like that reddish brown, yeah. Right, that's yeah, it's a great description. Um, mahogany is a very that mm. that's exactly what that is. Twelve percent ABV, thirty four IBUs, uh, mm. and it's it's ninety five points rated a superlative uh, beverage tasting institute of Chicago. Yeah. Well decorated beer. You go you go here, uh, you can you can see how uh, well decorated it is. Uh, Two thousand world ban uh, world beer platinum. Uh, I guess Chicago and, like it. Here's its here's its gold medals, 2003, 2005, 2006 in the World Beer Championship. Got a GABF 2000, uh, one silver, yeah, two bronzes, uh, one GABF, one uh, in uh, the World Beer Cup. So, well decorated beer. We'll go to the 2017 version of that, and you got a uh, 280. Yeah, soon to be 281. Uh, yeah, soon to be 281, and we got 102, 4.09 rating, man. That's yeah. that's very very good. I, I gave it four and a quarter. Yeah, and this would probably be in a in a couple years. This would probably be a four and a half. <laughs> I mean, it, it this is definitely one. I got a four pack. I think I'll, uh, I might drink, I might drink all four over the next month, and then just get another one and put it away. Uh -huh. I think that might be the. The way to do it yeah that's 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 it's you know that's really you know if you can buy the four pack mm -hmm. you know have one right now you know put the others away sell her the other ones and, and you don't necessarily for those that are listening and you're not necessarily familiar with with salaring beer i don't have a salar actually a basement um you know it just means like a dark room you could even put it in a closet i mean i you know mm -hmm. uh some people do if you have an extra room in your house uh, some people will just put them in the bottom of the closet there. Uh, it just needs to be dark and kind of a cool place, you know, uh, and you can sell her those beers there. Whoops. Yeah. Um, but it's good to put the other three away. Maybe mm -hmm. in six months, sample another one. You know, mm -hmm. maybe in a year, sample another one. And then in two years, sample that last one. Yeah. And I think you get AGs in your cellar too. I, picked I got up. some of those. Yes. <laughs> oh, Whoa! I was wondering if I was going to ask if you've had these before. Yes, I I still have them. I have the pack. I um, okay. I got the pack, and we all sampled them uh, this weekend. Actually, they're 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 fantastic. Really? Okay. I I bet it'll go good with the beer too. Yeah, that that might not be a bad pairing. Yeah. Because that's not a that's not it doesn't lean more barley wine as far as like tons mm -hmm. of no. of uh, date and all that sort of like dried uh, fruit. We get a little bit of that, but not too much. It's yeah. more of a malt. Yeah. Well, this is actually pretty tasty peanut butter. Oh my god! Yeah, the flavoring is spot on. Yeah. And then and then I I took the coconut ones uh, to work last night. 
Uh, they had uh, new coconut thin Oreos. It, uh, it, has anybody no. had the thin Oreos? Mm -mm. Oh man, I'm a huge fan of the thin Oreos, and and the uh, the coconut version were really good, man. And that nice, you get just not too much of anything, you know. What are you getting, Mark, from that from that uh, that peanut butter Oreos? Is the one he had in case anybody it's, didn't. It's pretty sweet, pretty good peanut butter. The old uh, the old ale. It's an okay pairing. It kind of overpowers the peanut butter. The peanut butter is so sweet, but I think it's the um, like the, the the fruit that's in here is it's okay. I think it'd be better with a stout. I mean, a, I think a peanut butter would go better with a stout, but it works. I wouldn't dunk it. I wouldn't dunk <laughs> it. I wouldn't dunk the <laughs> I'm not it, gonna go. I'm not gonna go full dunk. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know no. what's you know what's hilarious is I did that how many wow. years ago now, and uh, I, I've seen more of it in my area. People, you know, actual cookie with beer pairings. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Breweries doing it here in the in my local oh, area. Oh, yeah. You know, a, a cooking with a cookie with a uh, beer mm -hmm. pairing day. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, and everybody freaking laughed at me, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's a thing. You get the right beer, man. It goes, it goes great. It yeah. goes pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, <laughs> it's another thing to play around with. You know what I'm saying? Oh, these these are these are solid cookies. I I give these like um a four out of five on the on the Oreo scale. These are pretty flavorful. The, those are those are some good Oreo. If you're a peanut butter fan uh, mm -hmm. and you're that Reese's oh, fan. Yeah. You definitely got to get those because they had the Reese's ones, and they're different. Mm -hmm. They're a little different than the Reese's. Okay, this, this tastes pretty close to Reese's to me. Yeah, I'm a peanut butter fanatic, and for some reason, I have not tried those yet. Mm -hmm. I, I always pass them by on the shelf, maybe because they're not a limited edition. I yeah, they keep saying, "I'll buy them next no. week. I'll buy them next week." Yeah, yeah. they're they're, they're not like a limited. Butter, th these are pretty oh, yeah. pretty authentic. Authentic artificial peanut butter flavor. And you can tell, too, because you it's a bigger pack. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not that yeah. small uh, it's limited 15 edition. 15 ounces. So how many cookies are here? Uh, I don't know. What 30 is there, cookies like, or something 30, like that? 30 probably, yeah, because the small pack is 20. Okay. I want to see what they have for... Um, yeah, I don't see any... Oh, does it have peanut butter? No. That would be a... That, oh, it does. There is peanuts. Yeah, it's peanut butter. Actually, actual peanut butter in it. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 pretty good. They're pretty tasty. So, yeah. for for those of you that don't know, uh, I I do, uh, I am a little bit of a Oreo enthusiast as well. So, on top okay. of everything else, it's uh, yeah, I actually two, had two cookies has one gram of fiber, so I'm good. I'm good. I, I have to admit, I had one of my first uh, ciders uh, this weekend as well. Oh really? Uh, yeah, the the company brought some ciders, and so you might see a cider. You know, more than likely, you see a cider review coming from me. One of the big ones, I think it was red, red's apple mm -hmm. cider, whatever oh. it was. It was all right, you know. Pretty, you know, we had that, and then they had bought champagne too. So I had champagne, and you know, you all fake. I went full pinky out, baby. <laughs> full, uh, you know what I'm saying? Full pinky out, man. Yeah, all the way. I didn't tuck the pinky under the stem or nothing. I'll mm -hmm. get that thing out there, man. <laughs> make it loud, make it proud. Yeah, exactly, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's Pride uh, Month, isn't it, baby? Yeah. Full pinky. Boom! You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> we're here. We're gay. Get used to it. <laughs> 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 With that in mind, what do you have, Eric? What do you have in my fridge? Well, I'm just having a homebrew right now. I'm going to crack something open later, but I'm going to sit at your bomb. Oh, okay. So pretty standard. You, you know what I was telling the guys here, too? What was it, last week or Friday or something like that? But I, I still have one of your citra bombs, and I, I, I fully intend on cracking that bad boy open here pretty soon. And, and and we'll get the tasting notes on what a, a barrack citrus bomb is like. <laughs> be one, one, one year later. <laughs> <laughs> aged. Yeah. Was it was it temperature was it aged in your temperature controlled storage unit? It's, it's actually been aged in my temperature controlled refrigerator this whole time. So okay. well, that's actually 
th part. this this one th yeah that will we'll, we'll be completely fair yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sit your back with no hops left. In. Yeah, here's a <laughs> here's a very, very, very malty citra bomb. Here we go. It's now turned into a malt bomb. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is how you take all the citra out the beer and you make it a big malt bomb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my friend. All right. So, oh, oh, by the way, we got uh, Sunny One Two Three Boy One and uh, Michael. Mike, Michael Reagan in there, and uh, King is back in the in the chat as well. So, hey, Ruben, what do you have, my friend? Oh, he ain't got no no sound. Tom, what are you having, bro? I am having a Narragansett and Dell's shandy. Ah, oh, a shandy. Well, okay, I, I had that last year. Yeah, it's good. I believe it's a regular Narragansett, um, half and half Narragansett and half Dell's shandy. It's like a famous. Um, it's like a famous um, lemonade stand. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. What Dell's is? Is it a lemonade stand? It's like a it's like a company, but they sell like lemonade, like lemonade slushies and stuff. Okay, All but right. it's 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 pretty good. It's it's it, it's mostly if you've ever had an Eric Virgil and Narragansett, it's just like dosed with lemon, basically. Okay, it goes down easy. It's it's not too bad. So Narragansett is pretty much like a. Uh... Just like a lager, basically, like a macro, yeah. crafty macro lager type thing. Yeah, they're nothing yes. fancy. It's just, mm. it's just, oh, it's just regular beer. Yeah. I wouldn't, in my, in my personal opinion, I would never go out and buy it. <clears throat> it's got mm -hmm. it, in my opinion. But. Unless it was 10 bucks a case, right, Ruben? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's lost sound or something. Yeah, I don't think he can What's hear that? us. I remember him saying I can hear you guys, but my... It keeps oh, breaking man. up on me. That oh. damn ice that I have to deal with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, then I'm going to be having some new one, Indie Firm from Plymouth. Okay. Well, let me let me share the screen on that shandy for some people that might yeah. not have had that. Um, uh, shandies can be pretty darn refreshing right now too this oh, time of year. Uh, I bet you they sell good in Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, and that's you know what. Of course, and I'm sure we're we're not special over here, you know, in the in the beer aisle there at your grocery store or wherever you buy them. You know, the the uh, all those uh, apple ciders and all that seem to be pretty dominant. I don't know what happened to the. Yeah, it's kind of going on off and already. On. Yeah, that's that's weird. Their website all of a sudden went all whack. Um, but right here, uh, you got thirty six thousand ratings on here. Thirty six thousand eight hundred. Uh, 1,500 in the last 30 days, uh, 3.46 bottle caps, uh, an Narragansett Dell Shandy is the perfect thirst quenching balance of our gold medal lager with Dell's lemon concentrate brewed under the supervision of award-winning brewmaster, uh, Sean Larkin, uh, Gansett's, uh, lager is the highest Rated domestic lager, according to Beer Advocate. <laughs> yeah, according to Beer Advocate, on Untapped. So that's yeah. that. That's not working real well for you. You know, there's five I'm people sure, on I'm Beer Advocate. I'm surprised they didn't redact that. You know, a little black line through yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> there's five people on Beer Advocate for Christ's yeah, sake. All it's five hard. It's good. All five of them said we're the best. So yeah, I wouldn't. I, that I wouldn't. I wouldn't puff my chest too much on that one. <laughs> uh, While well, Dow's Lemonade. Uh, has been Rhode Island's favorite summer. Is that according to Beer Advocate as well? Favorite summer <laughs> treat for over six decades. So well, doesn't Rhode Island only have like fifty people in it? I mean, that's a pretty small state. So, you know, it is a small state. So what? You know, it's not very hard to be. You know, there's five people in Rhode Island. So you you can literally drive through Rhode Island in an hour. It can you really? I swear to God. Yeah, it's a hour Connecticut. It's the smallest I, state, I think. Yeah, I've only I've only been to Rhode Island. I delivered some meat there uh, once. What part uh, of it go to? Oh, pff, man, I don't. Tree, Warwick, I couldn't even tell you. I, I'd be lying if I told you because this was in the '90s. The last time I did that, so. But there's a good look at the can. Okay. Um, it's a cool can at least. That's a nice, look, so. that's a nice can yeah, looking can. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> 
it's it's a real nice looking can and everything. So let I'm me see if the website came up. No, the website's still loading. To them. So I think I think it's one of those beers that you drink after the lawnmower. Lawn, lawn mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a good lawnmower beer. Summertime beer. And, and you know they're they're typically just a nice mix of lemonade with a light lager, and and they can be pretty darn refreshing this time of year. You know so. Uh, whether you're in a humid climate or just in a super hot climate, um, you know, I mean, any excuse to have a beer, really, right? So, uh, and then what did you say was your next beer, Tom? It's a, um, it's a, I guess it's a new brewery out of Plymouth, Mass. Uh, the Indie Firm, it's a summer season. Oh, Indie. I've never heard of them before. Oh. Is that a bomber? Yeah, it's like a twenty-two. Oh, cool! I've never, I've never heard of them before, and I've just seen a couple bottles of different, different styles. So I was like, "Hey, why not?" And it's their saison. Yeah, I love seeing new breweries pop up out of nowhere and just trying this stuff. You know what I mean? It's just helping them out and helping you out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Plymouth Mass, Plymouth Mass. Then we've got uh, okay, yeah, they're on Untapped. Uh, and... Man, these Oreos might be gone by tomorrow. Uh, so, dude, okay. they are very good, aren't they? I think I know what, bre- what breakfast and lunch is tomorrow. Uh, how many come in a pack? Um, I think. Let's see. He, he, he might have. He might have quit looking. There's thirty. Thirty cookies per pack. Yeah. Because so if I eat all thirty tonight, that's only. Uh, forty-two hundred calories. That's not too bad. You eat that's like three <laughs> days of calories. <laughs> you know what? Is that is it's that so is that a it. summer saison or the beer terrain it, saison? It, it's here summer. Okay. Yeah, because I'm showing I'm showing two different, but now they're they're on untapped here, so we'll go with that one. Um. Let's see. You've got uh, 223 total ratings on here. 17 in the last 30 days. The 3.68 bottle caps here. Uh, 6% ABV, 30 IBUs, and it's classified according to Untapped as a saison farmhouse ale. See, saison is one of those styles that a lot of people are turned off about it. They don't want that. It's like a little sour. It's a little dry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want hoppy or malty. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Saisons can be kind of sour and kind of funky sometimes too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get that little bit of that. A uh, little bit of that. Mm, I guess a pickle description isn't quite right, but mm-hmm. it, I know what you're saying though. It's you get just that little hint of them in a saison. Mm-hmm. Uh, that little. Uh, you know, but it's kind of like it's kind of like the difference with lemonade too, right? Like you. You sometimes will want a nice cold glass of lemonade, and that can mean a bunch of things. Like some people want on a hot day, lots of ice, uh, and that <clears throat> that real tartness that a lemonade can give you if it's fresher and not as sweet. But some people want a nice sweeter kind of lemonade. You know, so it's mm-hmm. it to me it's that kind of difference. Like uh, you know, sometimes you want that nice little sweetness, but but a, a, a nice little tartness at the same time and that, i think that's what you get from a saison is that more leaning towards the tartness like you're not mm-hmm. you know and it, it it can be kind of quenching as well it, it can have its own sort of uh uh it, it can be a lawnmower beer for certain tastes yeah exactly you know <laughs> it's not for everybody though they're not you know uh that because it does lean towards the sour side so it's not they're definitely not, you know, for everybody. It's almost um, champagne a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even ask. I didn't ask Bum. I'm sorry. Did, did you have a malt liquor segment for us today? I do, but nothing urgent if you have other things that you need no. to. No. No, absolutely. Today, no. now would be a... not show up as the malt liquor update. I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we kind of, we all look forward to the, you know, Billy D uh, presence you know, in the show that he's kind of the bright spot now. He's kind okay, of the sure. The, the, sure. I always I always have some uh, some type of gossip. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's Billy. Yeah. 
We need some theme music for Billy D. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to have some sort of yeah, uh, theme music there for Billy D, man. But but this is the Billy D uh, appearance in the show, man. We have our we have our celebrity appearance in here every every week. Um, yep. See your agree. See. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. A few little notes here and there from the world of malt liquor. I was I was hoping that Barrick would be back in time for this. Because I I did after the show last week I did send him my master's my master's thesis. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. I just got him. Oh, you okay? So you haven't had a chance to uh, brush up on malt liquor one hundred and one yet. Okay, you'll, you'll you'll just have to muddle your way through this update then. And then after, <laughs> after, how, how long are the videos approximately? Uh, I sent you one that's like a compilation of Steel Worldwide's best. It's most of the stuff that you guys saw that I po sent you on yeah, uh, yeah. on Google+. Plus. Uh, you only have to watch the first few minutes to get the hang of it. It's a few varying lengths. You don't have to watch all the way through to, to get it. I just thought I'd, a couple samplings of uh, hmm. some of the different guys. But did you read my Malt Liquor 101 uh, manifesto? I just saw. I just saw your... Uh, oh, okay. Because I sent it all last uh, last Tuesday, I think. This reminds me of like I don't a. Know how I didn't get it. Student, yeah. Like, like <laughs> you didn't read it. Yeah, test yeah. Is it, it, today. The test is today. It's right now. We're testing now. <laughs> <laughs> you not you not getting it until today is no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> My dog ate it. <laughs> Who demerits? <laughs> That's one extra 40 ounce for you. Good. I'm putting your name on the board. <laughs> Don't do it again or I'll have to call your mother. <laughs> exactly. Go see the principal. <laughs> Go see if Principal Smith thinks you're so yeah, smart. Yeah, Mr. Smarty Pants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, Anyway, in the world of malt liquor this week, um, Jay Vega, who I told you hasn't been as active as he has been over the last few years, he just posted another video, and it almost has me wondering. I told you he did a, a, a video with uh, Tony Bennett playing in the background uh, last week. Oh, yeah. He, he did a new one, and the song that he played was Frank Sinatra, I Did It My Way. Oh. And, and he oh, has yeah. been threatening... He's been threatening to retire for a while now. He said he was going to retire after a thousand videos, and I I think he's around twelve hundred. And mm -hmm. he, he I've heard him mention before that he's going to stop. So until I see another video from him, that almost makes you wonder. Just you know, if you're going to do your last malt liquor video, what song would be the most appropriate for you to go out on? Yeah, that. That would that would be the one right there. I did it my way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah. So also, um, as all of you know, and uh, Barrick, you will eventually know, uh, the the arch enemy of the MLDC is Dwarf sixty eight. Oh, Dwarf. Oh, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Dwarf. Just pick, uh, um, Barrick. Pick any malt liquor. Uh, video from any of these guys and you will see them cuss out dwarf uh, most <laughs> most of them some of them have uh, uh, cussing out of dwarf in the video title uh, Falstaff Brewing in his description of his channel describes it as a pro malt liquor pro Ballantine ale anti craft beer anti homebrew anti dwarf channel yeah yeah, God, I'm well, looking at your email on the thing. It got you wrote a fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> Told you that was that was my master's thesis. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, yeah. In Malt Liquor 101. He did good. He, I mean, he mm -hmm. really he knocked it out of the park with that one. I, yeah, we were we read it. We read it, man. It was good. And everybody will be quizzed eventually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, this week, um, any everybody knows how badly Dwarf is hated. Actually, there's a temporary uh, moratorium on cussing out Dwarf because Dwarf made a malt liquor video recently. 
Ooh. He did. He didn't follow the blueprint. Oh. He phoned the living crap out of it, which uh, even Lootbag Larry, who does not cuss anybody out, Lootbag Larry, when he gets done with his beer, he goes, no, do look, no door foam. <laughs> <laughs> they, call, they call it door foam. Dorf, <laughs> Dorf foamed the bottle, and he didn't finish his malt liquor, but they're all giving him credit for at least making a malt liquor video. So they, you know, they're... It, they're, they've decided to not cuss him out for a while because he did do that video. That's so funny. So yeah, is, they, is, he, is he just like the black sheep of the family? No. Um, the I'm not sure it? how it... I Gosh. guess they all needed somebody to just despise. They yeah. hate a lot of people, but they needed somebody to, you know, yeah, to I take it to the next level. I think he was like level. either right guy, wrong time, or right guy right time because he yeah. right, right he hasn't done anything in like eight years but when they first started the uh what was uh the bdu when they originally were that mm -hmm. he was always commenting that you know you gotta quit drinking that crap drink craft beer you know so he was commenting all over the place yeah and he oh, just pissed everybody off and then he left for like seven years and they just yeah. stuck with him and i didn't have this on my notes but i just thought of this uh dwarf I saw a video of his this week, and I must admit it was a pretty well done video. Uh, I recommend everybody watch it. Just go to ch YouTube channel Dwarf Sixty Eight. He did a takeoff of an episode of Cops called Malt Liquor Police. Yep. Oh, and <laughs> it is done in the style of a cops episode where he pulls over a suspicious looking car because he suspects him of having malt liquor in the car, yeah. and he's narrating it like a cop does in his car. He goes, "We got to get this." This dangerous malt liquor off the streets. It's a dangerous substance. Causes hangovers. <laughs> causes make people people to make horrible videos. Uh, malt liquor must be uh, gotten off the streets. And he pulls over this guy, and uh, he he confiscates his malt liquor. And so and Dorf is playing the cop. And Dorf says, "Okay, sir, I'm gonna uh, let you go this time." But do me a favor. From now on, drink craft beer. And he hands the driver a six-pack of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. And the most amazing thing about the video is Dorf is actually driving an authentic, unmarked police car. I think it's a Crown Vic. I yeah. could not believe it. That it it's like, where did he get access to this police car? Here's here's Dorf getting it. Wow, getting in a nice Cadillac. Yeah. Oh, that's that's his new. Yeah, that's his newest video. Yeah, he did this a week ago, June twelfth. Yeah. yeah, this is the video that they uh, decided to get cut him a break on because he does drink malt liquor, not not inside the Cadillac. And he covered the license plate. <laughs> Smart guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that is that the police car? Watch when he drives. Is that the police car? It looks like the Crown Vic. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. It's that's the one. Cameo. That's the one he used in the. Uh, you can Malt buy liquor cops video. You can buy those in auction. Like sometimes yeah. you see people with. Oh, uh, okay. I get. He must have them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So th this is the cops malt liquor patrol video right here. Yeah. And he actually uses the cops as the intro. Yeah. Oh God. That's awesome. <laughs> he went all out. <laughs> yeah. no, he he kind of goes in deep on this. I watched this a couple months ago. It's kind of funny. And the car, the car that he see. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Dorf, sixty-eight. <laughs> wow, he put some production to this thing. Yes, Look he at did. this. Liquor special patrol. <laughs> Look at that. He's got different angles he's using, and it. Wow, he's. These guys are creative, man. That's what I like about about these guys. They they and, definitely. Wh and, whatever we think about mall liquor, the, the, these guys are definitely creative. Look at that. And the Mustang he pulls over has, I did notice, has the license plate uh, taped out with uh, electrical tape also. So yeah. he's got at least one other person in on this. Uh, yeah, uh, buddy, buddy of his, yeah. Because, you know, that someone's obviously taping this, you know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. Right. That's hilarious, man. That's funny. There it is. It's the malt liquor Mustang. Oh, there's the malt liquor Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> So he's got multiple people in on this, man. Yeah, that's funny. That that is funny. Getting dangerous malts off the streets. Do you see his description? Yeah. <laughs> that that is so creative, I swear. 
how do you not how do you not like that you know what i'm saying yeah that is that so is. creative man kind of t- pokes fun at both the craft beer and yeah. the malt liquor yeah you know? that, kind of- that is very creative it, it well thanks for that malt liquor update i really appreciate it that was uh that was a good one man he you always said he doesn't have much but he always does yeah he always yeah. does man and that, that- <laughs> <laughs> at least we actually got to see Dorf. Yeah. Yeah. So Dorf made Dorf 68 made a presence in this show as well. Um, Michael Reagan had said that they do the same thing there. I guess SD is uh, South Dakota. Uh, Hess and Stone did it uh, with Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, that was a mm-hmm. – I definitely saw that in my area too with the Girl Scout cookies. That was, that was a popular cookies. one. Time to have another one. All right. That was definitely a, a – a, a common one there and uh uh stewart jones says he's having a home brew and cheers good beer um so <clears throat> anybody else got another beer before we get into the rat and rave section of the show here i'm just going to finish off with the deschutes black butte porter which i oh. feel oh yeah can't, can't go wrong with this i no. i have a feeling i may end up liking well i know i'm gonna like it more than the sierra that i just mm-hmm. had at half the price yeah we don't get the, we don't get the shoots out here we really oh what are you drinking there Barry? i'm gonna have me a founders all day ipa oh okay mm-hmm. yeah another good one once in a while yeah another very very solid one yeah That's like full flavor yeah, session ipa craze it's it's got a good flavor, but it's like I think it's four seven. I think. Yep, four seven. Yeah. Alcohol. So you can drink a few of them and not get all messed up. Hence the name All Day IPA. Yeah, All Day IPA. Yeah. Yeah, and and you can't drink all day if you don't start early. <laughs> yeah. You have to start early to drink all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you and, and you know those those of us, uh, you know, we we've done that a time or two, you know, uh, you know, you wake up, have a beer at breakfast, and just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when breakfast is in the beer name, right? You got you got to drink it, right? Yeah, because you've got you know you breakfast out. You yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hello, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a beer, a uh, beer, a beer with uh, some sort of coffee in it. And there you go. You're off to the races, man. You know, <laughs> that that gets the party started. So the, that Black Butte, I'm curious to know what you think about that. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is one of my go-to porters. Um, I bought this in a uh, Deschutes variety case. They usually include this in their variety uh, packs. That's such um, a good I wish we got that here. We just we don't get the shoots at all down here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Not yet. Hey, Pretty high rated because the shoot. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome brewery, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Every every time I get to a place where I can get the shoots, I do get the Black Butte because it's such a solid beer. It's, good, it's, good, yeah. solid, basic, no frills porter. Yeah, there's, there's a uh, not a there's not a lot of breweries where a porter is your flagship beer, and that mm-hmm. includes that that's their flagship beer. Yeah, they do and a good that, job. At least that's the one they're known for. That's the the their Black Butte porter mm-hmm. is their. Uh, and, and you can kind of tell it here by we'll 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 just look at their untapped. I'm not going to get real crazy with it. Uh, wow, I'm I'm surprised I only have one rating on here for it. But um, yeah, because they they used to send that to me regularly. But in any mm-hmm. case, um, you look at 273,400 ratings on here. Is that enough for you? And then you got 2,800 in the last 30 days. And it still has a 3.83 bottle cap rating. So that's sure. that's insanely solid for that mm-hmm. many ratings right there. And uh, it's a 0.2%. That's a lot of flavor for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It it's is, almost an all-day porter. <laughs> a, a delicate, creamy mouthfeel contrasts with layered uh, depth, revealing distinctive chocolate and coffee notes. Dark and rich yet easy to drink. Is are you get you getting that? Uh, of course I am. I'll take yeah. this. I'll take this. <laughs> I'll take this over that uh, Sierra that I just had any time. Here's uh. We'll we'll take a look at Eric uh, Eric S's uh, photo of this beer, and that is what 
that is what you can expect there when you buy the latest. Uh, and then, of course, I've got my Black Butte Porter. Uh, Mark, I think, used to have a Black Butte Porter review, didn't you? Or mm -hmm. no? I did, yeah. Yeah, before ISIS got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. ISIS uh, stole his review, and that's it. And so that, yeah. that's. I've that's, had it like three or four times. Every time I go out west, I try to find it because it is such a good beer. It's it's a, I, forget, I forget what I, you guys, your ISIS refers to what? I forget what your ISIS refers to. Google. Yeah, that's just Google oh. when they, yeah, they <laughs> they take your, I, I try to walk, I try to do that delicate walk here because I don't want yeah, so anything. I can say whatever I want because they already got rid of me. Joe's got to be careful because yeah. they could just flip the switch on him. and Yeah. Yeah. They, they haven't seemed to uh, uh, quite attack me just yet, so I'm in their good graces, so I want to keep a, a good Google grade. <laughs> okay, so we're in the rat and rave section of the show. This is the part where we uh, express our rant, a rant, a rave uh, for the week. It could be work-related. It could be whatever. Just a general rant and rave you have. It could be societal or whatever. But uh, what do you got for us, Barrett? Hey, did I ever mention to you guys? No, I'm not going to go there again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has to do with the initials FW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, I've been on this show for what, five years? Yeah. Maybe something like that? Quite a while, yeah. Yeah, it's been at least four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first moved to Florida, remember me saying, you can't find any craft beer here. There's no breweries here. Mm -hmm. well, My rave is, a week ago, I went to a medium-sized town's brewery. Very nice. Uh, last Saturday, I went to Gainesville. There's four breweries there now. Okay. And I went to two of them, Swamphead. And I went to First Magnum. Really nice breweries, nice pubs, um, and the beer was good. So mm -hmm. it's not like Michigan, but it's it's nice, and it's it's nice that Florida is finally starting to come around to making some craft beer. And I did go through the uh, Cigar City and did their tour. That was about a couple months ago. So that's my rave. Florida's yeah. trying to catch up. That's good, man. In that, uh, yeah, because I, there's breweries. All across the country, popping up. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what, what what feels like every day, but I mean, it's not literally every day. But there's at least uh, a bunch popping up. You know, every yeah. year. You know, I was when I was in Gainesville. I was talking to the people. They said this particular brewery. I don't remember what it was called. They said it's opening today. If you want to go check it out, but it was oh. kind of a bit of a drive. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's four of them in Gainesville now, so that's like an hour from me. So that's 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 a rave. At least Florida's trying to catch up on this. Hey, thing. That, oh, yeah. with I think good. we're up to what was the, some of the latest numbers we've seen, Mark? Uh, uh, I think we went through those. Uh, how many craft breweries there are in America now? I think we did that maybe a year ago or something. And I think it was. Uh, yeah. What was it? Eighty eight thousand or seven thousand? Uh, oh, something like that. Yeah. So it's probably. Did you know? Do you know? Did you know before yeah. prohibition, there was like twenty, thirty thousand breweries. Before, before prohibition and everything got shut down, there was a shit ton of people already brewing. So imagine, imagine if those breweries or those people brewing were still brewing. Yeah. You know what I mean? no, they only about we're still only about a third of where we were back in, you know, nineteen nineteen or <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> I had a brewery. I mean, that's yeah. It's pretty much it. I mean, every town had a brewer and a pub. Right. Know, they brewed their own beer. And that was it. Well, yeah. that's, like, that's like Michigan now. I mean, yeah. now like little tiny towns mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. brewed. But yeah. uh, hey, we're we're starting to wake up here and get a few of them. So, and there, that's I just good. I was reading something about uh, one opening in Fort Myers today. So, awesome. Good thing. That is. That is. That's terrific. That's good, man. Yeah, well, thanks for that rave for yeah. once, yeah. Uh, hey, Bum, yeah. what do you got for us, my friend? A rant or a rave? Uh, just a small rant uh, this time. I guess the same Comcast gremlins that uh, 
are currently pl uh, plaguing Ruben right now that is yeah. preventing him from being on the show right now. Those same Comcast gremlins were plaguing me all day long. My internet was out for hours at a time. And even during the course of the oh. show, I went out a couple of times for about 10 seconds. Fortunately, it didn't happen when I was in the middle of talking. And hopefully it's not happening right now. And I'm not aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's talking like, to no one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's it. You know, if you call them and then you compl if you complain about breakages in your internet, you can get a reimbursement for a certain amount of time. Really? Even for an hour here and an hour well, there? If you tell them for like a couple days, you know, you can bullshit. Mm -hmm. A couple days or like three, four, five days and be like, hey, my internet has been working. They'll, they'll, they'll help you out a little bit. I, yeah. I, tr I try not to talk to any of those people if I can help it. <laughs> yeah. I can't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> and, and Mark, I, you got a rent yeah. or Ray for us? Me? Um, I have, if any, I, I don't, are any of you golf fans at all? I no. Can, yeah. I, no, but I did see little bits of the tournament here or there. The this US Open weekend. was really good this year. I mean, it was, uh, it was great to see all the, um, the, young, the young guns in the uh, PGA Tour just kind of go. They, Saturday was fantastic, and uh, Sunday was, was pretty good, too. So it's, it's nice. It seems like there's a good um, group of young, young players coming up that are going to kind of keep the, keep the game going forward. But it was a really competitive tournament and a beautiful course. Man, that uh, course up in uh, Wisconsin was the first time they had the U.S. Open in Wisconsin, and it was just a beautiful course. So they said it showed like a European course, right? Like a like a yeah, British. Yeah, course. it played like a Scottish links course, yeah. especially on Sunday yeah. with the wind. Well, I'm so, glad yeah. to get your take on it because the the take that all the analysts had wasn't good. It was. Hmm. It's gotten really bad reviews. It's it, they. They yeah. said it was one of the worst opens ever. And the ratings yeah, well, they I said were. Guys, oh, I guess open is supposed to be that nobody gets oh, below par, right? Yeah. And this was like ridiculously low. Yeah, below, but Sunday, Sunday was tough, and they played. They still played well. I mean, but it was just so close. There were so many people. There was eight or ten people that were within a couple shots going into Sunday. So that was nice, and they were all young. Right. Most, you know, eighty percent of them were under the age of thirty. It seemed like so. That was that's good. With with basketball being over, you know, to, right now really the only thing going is golf. You know, so to, and baseball, and baseball, yeah. and we're yeah. not even, you know, halfway through the baseball season. So it's like, you know, baseball still kind of on the back burner. You know, and and mm -hmm. you're just kind of really waiting on football. Everyone's just kind of like, dude, <laughs> dude, hey, another month. Uh, yeah, another, week, yeah, another yeah. month for that. You're, you're actually uh, weeks away because they, they're going to be reporting to training camp. Yeah. And, you know, hell, they're already doing Tom Brady talk, for Christ's <laughs> sake. So, I mean, you know, the poor, you know, I would – honestly, I would hate to be on his level, you know, all, that kind of celebrity with anything because they just – I mean, he, he can't do anything that, that you know. Uh, I mean, it just – that kind of celebrity, you know, they, they, they're, like, constantly interviewing you, your mama, your wife, your kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, anything to get anything about you, <laughs> you know? You know, why, you know why I love the guy, though, is because when they come up to him and they say, hey, it's time to take a pay cut so we can get other guys on the team, he takes a pay cut. Yeah. Like, if you look at I the go from $22 million a year to twenty one five. i I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the top 20, 20 players in in the world that get paid, Tom Brady's not in there. Yeah, no, he's you know not. What I mean, yeah. and he's one of the best, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it kind of helps. Salary the other, and, uh, the other person contributing to your bank account makes fifty a year. Yeah, she makes more than he. Amy <laughs> yeah, makes she makes. Yeah. She makes fifty mil a year. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, that's that much. Yes. Yeah, she, I would I would I would I would I wouldn't be surprised if she makes more than that. Yeah, see, they, they the last the last I had heard, uh, they said what Genzel Gin, right uh, makes uh, fifty a year, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, you can afford to take a little, you know, slice off here and there. Yeah, okay, I'll take get I'll take a million off, give it to yeah. somebody. You know. Well, you know, it's actually for his own benefit. If they get good players, oh, it protects them. 
that's that's it extends his career yeah, another year or two. That's why players like him do that. Uh, Tim Duncan was another great example of that as well. He he was never really one of the highest paid players and really deserved it with all the mm-hmm. accolades he had got. Um, so that was your your rave was the 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 tournament and the coverage. Now I didn't I didn't sit and watch it. I just saw little glimpses here and there. So you you thought Fox did a decent job of uh, it, it looked good on television. Now that they is did. one thing they say they say it just really showed well on TV. Yeah, it did it did really well. There, the Fox golf coverage is not quite as good as like CBS golf coverage. The course played well. Uh, there was lots of guys in you know in the lead. It was it was a it was a fun tournament to watch. Okay. You know, maybe maybe if you're looking for the the U.S. Open winner to be you know even par, no, it sucked by that measure. But right, tournament. And and let's see if we get anything out of Tom today. Is he going to have a rant or a rave for us today? What what can he do, man? I don't really ever have a rant or a rave. I just I don't know. Whenever we get to this point, I think what should I say? I don't know what to say. Tom, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> don't. To don't feel bad. It's like me with the tasting notes when they say, what are you getting out of this beer? I'm lost. <laughs> it's beer, right? Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <All right>. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave. Yeah, that was Dave. That yeah, that was no? Dave. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to say this. I, I don't really rant away. I, I just like to give advice or for my, myself. Sure. sure. Um, I'm 26. There's a lot of people out there in the same same spot I am, um, with different expenses and dif- different everything. Money just going out, flowing out the window. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm at the point where I want to save, 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 save as much as I can, mm-hmm. and maybe one day open up like a brewery or something like that. Awesome. Like do something for myself or do something. That'll make me happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, I don't know what to say. I really don't. I, I just, that's, I just, th- I'm at that point where I'm trying to do best for myself in my life. Right. right. Hell, hell, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like two years older than you, and I have yeah. the same opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but any, any, anybody, anybody at any point in their life, they can, they can, they can, they can do anything they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, you're, if yeah. you're 70, you can still, you can still do whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? It, well, that's, yeah, it's, that's the key. You figure out what you want to do and then figure, come up with a plan to get there. Yeah. That. And, you know, if, every, if everybody else in your age group isn't doing it, that's fine. You just yeah. do what do what you need to do to get where you need to be. Yeah, it's you're definitely random. not going to get any any. Uh, that's a good one, man. It really is. Uh, it's it's good advice uh, to kind of you know give to to people to remind them, hey, man, you know, save your money, man. Don't just spend your money recklessly. Don't just spend your money crazily. I mean, and 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 we are talking about craft beer here, but you know, uh, but it, at the same time, uh, you know. You do have to save your money to kind of, uh, you know, spend it on something that you really like, like craft beer. Or, uh, you know, some women really enjoy makeup, so they save their money so they can buy the fancy makeup or a fancy purse or something. Uh, it, it, see, I know that I used the woman word without the f bomb in front of it. <laughs> hey, let me say about that. that uh, <laughs> That's why I make my own beer. You go buy. You guys are talking about spending. Mm-hmm. 30 bucks mm-hmm. for a 12 pack. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm making my beer 50 to 75 cents a bottle tops. Yeah, hell yeah. And it's yeah. good. I mean, you guys have tried it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's good beer and it's it's you know, it's a fraction of the cost. Right. Yeah. And you know where it's a bit of a hobby too, but well, you know, you know, Tom, <laughs> uh there's a a really, really, really good friend of the show. I've finally met him. Uh, that's pretty much exactly your age, and that's that's what he did. He he uh, mm-hmm. really good with his money for being so young. Wow, I mean, he's really wow. You know, saved his money. I don't think he financed anything. I think between him and his 
what was it, his buddy or something like that? But uh, you're talking Zach? about Zach? Yeah, it's his cousin, right? Yeah, his yeah. cousin. Yeah, I think yeah, it's between him and his cousin, they fully funded their own that brewery that they're using, man. So, like, I don't uh, want to be or anything, but I, like watching Zach like for years, I never knew he was in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, no, I, he's you, the... would watch, you would never know, like. Yeah. I mean, I Late, lately, it's been a little more out there. It's it's definitely. I think he's a little it's more, new. but it's still, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, he's he's favorite. definitely uh, grabbed life by the balls and said, yeah. "This is what I want to do." And yeah, he's he's successful at it. I mean, yeah. he's had the what's it? Brewery's going on three years, four years old at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they've been I mean, doing really need, well. All you need is yeah. four yeah. Beer, 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 beer. Drink it. Yeah. I've been on here a lot yeah. longer than that. Yeah. yeah, well, he was on the show for at, probably going on almost two years before he actually started the brewery. So, like 2011 <clears throat> and opened a brewery 2013 or 2000. Yeah, because it. Teen, I think. Yeah. yeah there, there was a whole year of just. Him filling out paperwork. Oh, it was. <laughs> Remember that? I think yeah. you know. I actually think that he was. I, I think he was right on that edge too. I think like if Tom were to start said brewery, let's say the end of this year, like he's going to start filing paperwork to start his own brewery towards the end of this year. I Tom's yeah. going to have a way easier process, I think, than than Zach did. I think he was on that fine line of uh, legislation being that much tougher now i i know i know here in arizona yeah. they're making it much well some of the some of the cities here in the phoenix area are making it easier to to get said brewery started you know they, they want to be kind of they're 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 thinking about it more not so much as oh you're you're making beer but more like oh you're another small business and we want that you know we want to encourage that mm -hmm. so just really expensive like say you'd open up a brewery say like say if you owned a bar out in new york city like say say you had a bar in New York City, it's a million dollars to to sell sell liquor or sell beer for the license. Oh yeah, the, the license. Yeah. yeah, for the city. Yeah, not. I mean, out here, my, my area, it's probably like hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, that, that it's, depends it's, on the area. It's expensive. It's a, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I've got I've got a buddy here that owns a growler store, and he's looking at opening up a uh, uh up a brew pub, and. Yeah, it's a chunk of money, but it's not near as expensive as it would be in, say, a big city like New York or yeah. something like that. Well, and you know, actually, Tom, I got to correct you on that because it's it's only about a half a million uh, to get the license, and it's the other half to grease the pocket. So <laughs> <laughs> Everybody happy. Yeah, to make sure your application gets pulled <laughs> right on through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's. And that's why it costs a million dollars. You know? <laughs> so in your yep. business plan, you have to put an allotment for greasing pockets. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the sad reality is that's true. No matter what, there's yeah, always some yeah. of that that goes on. Yeah. It just has to. You know? It has yeah, to. There's, there's a little. Marketing expense. Yeah. There, there's a little uh, <laughs> greasing of the pockets that goes on there, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my 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 rave would be just uh, waiting on the NFL to start, man. I mean, I <laughs> I'm just uh, you know I'm I'm one of those anxious NFL fans that's just dying to. Uh, You've got about forty days, probably. Don't, doesn't really things start up like August first when really they get going on camps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and the preseason gets going and everything. So, yeah, it's uh, as as a season ticket holder, you know, I'm I'm anxious to get my tickets, and they don't generally come out for another month. I, I, the last week in July is typically when they'll okay. they mail out your tickets, and so it's and then you get like a little kid that knows he's going to Disneyland. <laughs> Yeah. So when, when Joe gets his tickets, then we know football season is right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Then you're like, yay, football, I can live again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Joe, I apologize, but who, what's your team? The Rams. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I will take those apologies. Yeah, they're, Remember you that. know. Yeah, they, they actually, and I had uh, both Cardinal and Rams season tickets last season, but I let the Rams go um, because it was, it's just, 
so expensive um and it, it'd be different if they played differently but man i mean uh, it's to go it's not only uh the, the cost of the ticket though is is what, what i factor in it's the cost of like you said budgeting you know what i'm saying so i kind of figure out everything <laughs> and it's just not worth it for me it was a hard sell because I, I do sell most of them and it's a hard sell because it's hard to convince people to go see that product. So you're going to have to go through all the LA traffic, uh, get the hotel, all that trouble uh, in, on top of the cost of the tickets that I'm charging you. And um, it's a really hard sell, you know, so especially when they're they're in the Coliseum right now. And now they've actually announced that they're going to have to go another full season in the Coliseum. They had to delay the Super Bowl. I think now uh, I think Dallas got that Super Bowl now. I think they switched years. Um, is, that, is it Dallas this year? No, 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 no. It's or maybe maybe it is Dallas this year. It, anyway, whoever was supposed to get it uh, the year after the next next year uh, was the Rams, but they switched with the 2000. What would that now be? The 2019. Mm. So they switched uh, Super Bowls. The Rams did with maybe it's Tampa or something. I don't know, but in, in any case, they they switched Super Bowls. Uh, because they, you know, it got delayed with all the rain that they had in LA. So, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a really tough sell anyway. So I gave up those tickets and, uh, and they've been begging me back ever since. And I'm like, man, I couldn't be happier that I got rid of them because it's, it's just going to be a tough sell, but yeah. I have the Cardinal tickets cause they, you know, they, they're the same division. So the Rams play here once a year. So I still see the Rams as the way I look at it. Um, and if you've ever been to Cardinal stadium here, uh, well, it's actually, uh, 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 what is it? University of Phoenix stadium, but it's, a uh, man, it's, it's a great, I've, I've seen people from, uh, the East coast come out here. You know, I've seen all different mm -hmm. sorts, sorts of people come and they, they all say the same thing. Wow. What a stadium, you know? So it's, it's a great experience here for sure. So and they, they've got the roof on with the AC blast. And so, that's yeah, awesome. <laughs> it's, it's uh it's 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 oh it's just so much fun <laughs> quick, quick, quick question quick question how much is a beer oh please um depending on the size of the beer you get you know what i'm saying but they're roughly maybe it's how big a pour is that i want to say maybe 16 or 20 ounce pour uh eight bucks you hey, know you go to gillette stadium 14 dollars Oh, beer. Really? You, you know what? I, I you know I I have to be honest. I haven't ordered a beer in 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 years. I I I I'm not. I don't go to games and drink. The, the Actually, only, go to watch the game. You You're like one of the like the eight people there that watch the game. Yeah. I, <laughs> I order. You know. You know why? Because I'm really. Uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd about. Uh, you know, stuff collectibles, and they have the collectible uh, souvenir cup. Uh, well, they have a souvenir cup for beer, soda, and popcorn, but mm -hmm. I like to get uh, – every once in a while, I'll get a, a popcorn just for the souvenir bucket, give the popcorn to a kid or something, and I'm like, just <laughs> give me back that bucket. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, And then I, I do collect a souvenir cup of, uh, of Coke because that's a 32-ounce pour of uh, soda, and I, I, I get that every game I go to. So I'll have, like, all oh. the cups for every season. Okay, so each cup, each game has the, the two teams? It has yeah. A cup for each team? Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So they're, yeah. And they're cool. They're kind of that little sort of thing. So when you turn the cup, you know, that stuff moves in the cup. Oh, okay. You know uh, okay. So Not bad for six bucks, right? Is, how much is it? Like six bucks? No, you know what? I gave you the price on the souvenir cup of soda. So, like, I don't know actually what a, a cost of a beer is. So, it's got to be more than that. But but yeah. a, a lot of stadiums are pretty darn similar as far as what they charge. Oh, yeah. You know what I notice? If, if your team wins a couple championships, like, you get you get the Red Sox to win a couple championships or New England wins their championships, all the prices go up. Oh yeah, every yeah, single sure. like like you yeah. see the Cardinals one the year after I guarantee the prices went up. Yeah, and it's just it's demand. They 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 if you if you want to go see them, you know what I mean. Yeah. And you're gonna mm -hmm. pay the prices. Yeah, yeah. They they uh. You know, they wouldn't they wouldn't keep the price as high as it is if they weren't selling at least <laughs> make, it worth, make it worthwhile. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in any case, though, man, I'm I am one of those football nerds. I just love football, and I'm I'm waiting on it again. You know, that's that's uh, I I just love going to ball games, football games. Uh, it's it's so much fun. Well, my you know, first 2017 pocket schedules. <laughs> oh, Panthers, Bengals, right. Panthers, Jaguars, Dolphins, Packers. Awesome. Awesome. Are you going to get the, the uh, Carnegie Mellon football schedule? Um, the CMU? Yeah, CMU. Damn oh, man. yeah. I, I think I have some. Uh, I have a lot. Three? Yeah, I have a lot of Carnegie stuff that are, are parts of Steeler schedules. They Steelers, Pitt, Penn State, CMU. Okay. Yep. Right on. Well, thank you guys for showing up again. This is uh, another – longer share of beer <laughs> but uh thanks man i appreciate everyone showing up i thought it was a, a good show great conversation great show yeah um always good we haven't seen our our lone female viewer here in the chat for a little while but uh, carrie. uh yeah carrie hasn't been here though, two weeks right but um uh nonetheless come still back, a really carrie. add some class to the show come <laughs> back we need you <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, still a very good chat room going uh, this week. And uh, thank you guys, man. Bum, Mark. Appreciate it, man. Tom, thank you. Barrick was also in here. And Ruben, sorry about ISIS, man. Yeah. You know, you know they just, uh, I don't know what to do about that. I am not going to. My ED, I think. I, I personally am not allowed to say anything because, you know, that's you know that's uh your throat will be slit from ear to ear <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be next exactly yeah, so uh oh i would like to mention though there uh, maybe another little bit of a rave maybe we'll see uh just more of a general comment uh on on i i believe amazon's just gonna have world domination here before we know it i mean they yeah. they they are in the process of buying uh whole foods and and I don't know, everything else you own or want to own, <laughs> I think they're just going to buy it. Did you hear the, did you hear the, the uh, I don't know, I guess it's a joke probably, where Bezos was home and he's like, Alexa, I want to order food from Whole Foods. Yeah. And Alexa said, Whole Foods bought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> It's saying yeah. that, that supposedly now you're going to be – like at one point you're going to be able to buy Whole Foods food off of Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. well, the the bright spot to that the, – the reason I even mentioned is you were talking about finances and, and that I am really, really big into finances, not as much as our friend Mark here, but I am really big into saving money and stuff like that. One of the reasons I don't shop at Whole Foods I, – I will go there and have a beer because here in my area Whole Foods has bars. And so I'll, I'll have a, a, a beer there occasionally, but um, hopefully it's just too expensive. I just won't shop there. Uh, mm -hmm. And Amazon did say they are going to lower the prices at Whole Foods. So yeah. Amazon has that kind of reach. They have a bigger reach than Whole Foods. Um, and and they, they, they I just have I, the niche. They, they have things that other stores don't have. They have. Yeah. yeah. Well, now that Amazon bought them, they'll have those same things, but they have more of them. More, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 price. and Amazon Probably. has what what I'm hearing uh, on my end is that Amazon, you've got you've got Costco as the number one retailer of organic foods, and mm -hmm. they're really? going after Costco with that move. So with with that move, and to me, I'm already all in with Amazon versus Costco. To me, it's not worth it to have a Costco membership because Amazon offers so much and it can come to me, you know. Yeah. So I'm as much as I used to be on the Costco bandwagon a few years ago, and I've it's in my videos as well. It's documented that I was a Costco nerd, you know. But now I've really gotten off of it, and uh, to me, it's just all about Amazon. And, and and with Walmart being in this battle as well, uh, and Costco being the number one organic foods seller. Amazon's jumping in there now, you know, full bore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to benefit us because these big companies been a battle like that, and we reap the benefits of their uh, battling. It's going to mean lower prices and and maybe more people at Whole Foods, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I just have so. one question. Did you guys ever have Shaw's in, in the South? Shaw. I've never heard. I've never heard of them. 
Shaw's supermarket. Mm-hmm. Is there no. like in the north? They're like uh, one of those supermarkets that like were huge at one point in the '90s, and they just totally dropped the ball. And then now we have. They, a sound, they sound like a regional, like Publix is down here, like a regional supermarket. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, Stop yeah. and Shop, and I think Stop and Shop is like a, a brother, a sister, or something else in the south. I don't know. Something yeah. like that. No, it's like Giant Eagle in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, Giant Eagle is like a large regional firm there. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many places around. Yeah, that, <laughs> you're going to see a lot of consolidation in the next five yeah. or ten years. That kind of yeah. stuff. It's yeah, cool. you are, especially with this, because Amazon already has Amazon Fresh, and it and it works really, really well. Mm-hmm. And um, with this, with this latest. Uh, uh, what do you call it? accusation? Uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Accusation. Acquisition. 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 There you go. God, get all those merge, more words mixed up. But with this latest acquisition, um, y- you're going to see a lot of things changing in groceries. You know, so uh, who knows where where they're going to go with that? So. But you realize, Joe, all this is irrelevant because eventually Amazon will be on and everything else by Time Warner. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What uh, what what'll be a trip was if Amazon starts buying breweries? Wouldn't that be a trip? That would be awesome, actually. If, if Amazon, what if they did that? What if what? Ooh, that's a whole nother show. But what if <laughs> Amazon were to start buying craft breweries? Am- Amazon buys AB InBev. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, think about this. What if they were to start getting in the craft brewery business, start buying up craft breweries, and start? I mean, Amazon's got the distribution. Who's yeah. worth? Who's worth more, AB and Bev or or or, or um, Amazon? Oh, oh it ain't even close. It ain't even close. No, Amazon's. Oh, you kidding? Oh, oh, please. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're huge. Enough money to buy. the limit right now. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. You know what? Because you know what? You don't. You don't realize, Tom, is how big Amazon's space program is. I mean, Amazon's that big. There's only there's only two other people in the space game other than the, in this country, other than NASA, and that's uh, the guy that owns Tesla and the guy that owns Amazon. <laughs> well, Walmart, Walmart's another big one. Walmart is not in the space game. They ain't got that no, kind of right. money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See what they're gonna do is they're gonna launch rockets into space full of stuff, and then it'll just like parachute <laughs> down to your house. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they are loaded. I mean, they, mm-hmm. we, they just have so much cash to just spend on stuff. Walmart's the largest grocer in the country, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, and 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 one of the largest, if not the largest, retailer in the mm-hmm. in the world. But uh, um, I mean, boy, yeah. Amazon's just crushing stuff. I mean, they Amazon sells everything but houses and cars. Uh, wait until next no, they year. do sell cars. They yeah. sell they cars. Do. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you can buy a car on Amazon. You can yeah. buy a car on Amazon. I no, promise you. So they don't sell houses. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. The, the year we're only in June. <laughs> Jesus, That's, that would be ridiculous. If they no, they do. Them. They they actually used to. What what cars was it, Mark? The smart car or something? Yeah. You could order it, and they would deliver it. Actually, they 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 tried delivering them on like uh, the flatbed uh, tow truck type mm-hmm. deal. With a big Amazon Prime box on it and everything, that's but, ridiculous. That's yeah, crazy. They they don't do that anymore. But uh, there there's only a few cars, but they 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 do sell them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, they You're definitely do. Over the world. Yeah. So in any case, we're out of here. Uh, may, maybe that'll be an Amazon symbol up here sooner or later. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Sponsored by Amazon. Yeah, sponsored by Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. We should get the... Oreos, Amazon, and a bunch of sponsors. <laughs> yeah. We should call them up. Like, Yo, man, I just sponsored. I just yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens, man. <laughs> anyway, man, guys, uh, thank you, man. Hey, we got Forceful Burrito and uh, yeah, Sam Sam Smith. I've definitely reviewed that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you want to check out that review, it's it's on there. Um, we'll see you guys next week, man. Peace out. All right, yeah. later. Okay.